the challenge of being in public domain, particularly the challenge of building uh, audience and following, you know, I've got currently 15,000 subscribers on my YouTube channel because of technology, because of that reach, it's just impossible with the overwhelming criticism that can actually flow in. Now, yes, it may not necessarily match by any means the amount of positive responses that I get from uh, the content that I put out there, but there is absolutely a part of me that just feels a little sting anytime one of those comments come in. That's the first thing that I think is is deployed. It's like emotionally disconnecting, lack of empathy. And I'm curious, really curious what you think about that and how you may have experienced that yourself. And I'd love to know in the comments, uh, is this something that you've had to do? Have you had to emotionally disconnect when you've read comments or when you've read responses to your content when you're putting it out there to the world? So next up, I wanna talk about manipulation and the M word is a naughty word. For those that have experienced emotional abuse, something that feels really icky to even say. And for me personally, on my journey, I used to feel really icky even saying that word. And I remember a friend of mine, Mitch, once said to me, Pete, can I manipulate you into having more fun? And I was like, ah, oh, that feels so damn edgy. And let's talk about how a leader may deploy manipulation. How may they deploy manipulation for the good of a business, for the good of a team, for the good of those they are leading. Now, one thing that I have learned in my time as an entrepreneur is that leading is all about people. And, um, you know, being in business, being in organizations is really all about people. It's just people, 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 people. And as a leader, I've come to discover that my job is really about helping people to play nice together, helping teams to work coherently together um, and helping them, you know, many different people from different backgrounds with different unique value sets, helping them to try and find ways to play nice together. And interestingly, a little story from my childhood, um, for me, part of my unique dynamic that I'm able to bring to the table is my parents divorced when I was eight years old, and they really didn't get along for the next 10 years of um, being divorced, even though they obviously had shared custody of us kids and we were going back and forth between mom's and dad's house, uh, but they really didn't get along. And I found in my experience where I've, I'd have uh, you know, one parent telling me something about the other parent and, you know, another parent telling me something about the first parent um, uh, that, you know, may have, may have been true, may have been not true, um, but for me was, um, you know, challenging to be in the middle of. There were all these different, you know, values and different ideas and different opinions of each other um, that, you know, didn't necessarily gel. And so I found that one of my great skills that I've been able to bring into the workplace is to be able to take, um, you know, a bunch of people with different ideas and different opinions and help them to, as much as possible, work well together as a team. Basically, you're wrangling humans. And so for those that have that skill, okay, well, you know, where may we need to deploy the skill of manipulation? Where might we need to use manipulation as a skill here to have people uh, work nicely together. And the example that comes to mind for me is, you know, imagine you have a scenario where you have, um, you know, two different team members and they're bitching about each other, right? Um, and, you know, they don't get along for whatever reason, they value different things in life. And that's going to happen when you have a diverse team, uh, when you have multiple humans in your business, you're going to have people who don't get along on a personal level, even though they're expected to get along on a professional level uh, and actually work together, right? And, and just imagine for a second, you have someone complaining to you, I really don't like it when Barbara over there is slow to respond to emails, right? Barbara's just really slow to respond to emails and I think that's unprofessional. You can tell that judgment is coming in there, right? I think they should be different. Uh, I don't think that's the right way for them to be. That's a, that's a judgment, that's a judgment. I think that's wrong, that's a judgment. I imagine you also think it's unprofessional for someone to be slow to respond to emails, right? But in that leadership scenario, your responsibility, your one goal is to actually keep the peace. Your one goal is for the team to be coherent and to work together. So the wrong response is to jump back into that and say, fuck Barbara. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, that pisses me off too. I, yep, I, I, think that's, I think that's stupid because, because what you do there is you actually, you add fuel to the fire of the division between the person who's complaining about Barbara and Barbara. It's actually not the right way to go about that situation. What do we have to do in that situation? We have to do, we have to go back to that stuff and we have to say, yep, I understand that. I understand that, um, you know, that may be challenging for you when Barbara's, um, you know, hasn't responded. A good leader would say, well, you know, what options do you have to deal with that? Have you communicated that with Barbara? You know, what have you done to solve the problem yourself rather than, you know, taking the, the monkey off their back and putting it on your back? You know, how can you deal with this? In a way, the, the manipulation there is to put aside your own judgments, to put aside your own opinions, to put aside the, 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 the enmeshment and the trauma bond that is there just waiting for you to manipulate yourself into not going into that trap. 
but also to manipulate that person by not agreeing with them and not validating what they are sharing in order for the greater good of the team and the coherence of the team to actually help support them. So the next trade I wanna talk about self-aggrandization, the unrealistic belief about oneself, the narcissistic belief that one is superior and one is above all else and, 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 you know, and this person is the one. And the story of Narcissus was he looked into a pond and he fell in love with his own beautiful image and then, and then he fell in and I think he drowned or something. That is the narcissist. The narcissist has this, this false, aggrandized sense of self um, and belief in oneself. So that trait sounds pretty negative and, and sounds pretty not useful. And, and uh, you know, the inflated ego, you know, ego is the enemy. It sounds like it can never, never actually be useful, right? But where may it be useful for an entrepreneur to have a, an insane self-belief in oneself? Where do you think that might be useful? Where do you think it might be useful to have a, an unrealistic view that things will be successful and that you will prevail and that your solution is the right one and that you have the conviction that it's gonna work? Well, it's kind of every day. <laughs> it's kind of every day that the entrepreneurs, we are, we are faced with the challenges that may potentially kill the business. We are faced with the challenges that seem, you know, insurm insurmountable. We're faced with the challenges that seem to be punching us in the face every day. And many entrepreneurs talk about, you know, just sticking it out for the first thousand days, just getting through the first three years, just getting your 10,000 hours. You need to have an unrealistic belief in yourself and an unrealistic belief in the business and in the success of the business for you to actually get through that because uh, as the great Steve Jobs says like you know when you're getting smashed in the face when you when you're having those down days like you have to have that unrealistic belief otherwise any sane person would give up and so it's up to you to deploy some narcissistic self-belief not necessarily belief that you're above others but belief that you will succeed, belief that you will prevail so that you can actually just exist as an entrepreneur. It, you know, there's no, there's no easy way to say it. Entrepreneur is, entrepreneurship is a challenging road. You are choosing a challenging road. You are choosing some pain on that road. And having an unrealistic belief in yourself can help from time to time. Probably not something that you want to make use of every day of the week, in every interaction you have, in every relationship that you have in all areas of your life. But in business, from time to time, it, it makes sense for you to use it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've delved into some uh, pretty interesting uh, stuff here. Well, I think so. If you think it's interesting to give me a thumbs up, let me know that you liked it. Hit that subscribe button if you wanna hear more of this. If you have a comment, if you're interested in this, uh, drop it down below. If you'd like to see more long form content videos like this, uh, please let me know, I'd love to share them with you. And if you have an idea uh, or inspiration for this channel, uh, well, please let me know and I'd love to share it with you. All right, take care. I'll see you in the next video.